Prop Foam 10 Casting Tips. Today we're going to show some tips for casting flexible foams into silicone molds. And in this case, we'll be casting this prop wrench into a 7325 mold we made in a previous video. Now it's important to note that Prop Foam 10 is an industrial foam and it has a little different mix ratio than some of our other products. This is a 40A to 100B mix ratio. So you do need a good gram scale for this and it's also a good thing to remember that flexible foams work best in a warm environment. Uh, usually 78 to about 85 degrees gets you the best results and the best skin properties. And Prop Foam 10, because it is a very industrial foam, uh, it's a good idea to wear gloves and also work in a well-ventilated area or wear a respirator mask. But it's important to remember that this is an industrial foam product, so you want to make sure you take the right precautions when you're working with it. Now to begin, we're going to prep our mold. We're making, we want to make a realistic prop wrench. So we're prepping this mold by brushing some metallic powders into some key areas to simulate the look of worn steel. So since the original wrench was painted red, but it had some exposed steel areas on the original wrench, those areas were going to go in with a fine brush and uh, paint those, paint that pigment into those areas. And one of the things you'll find is some silicones grab that metallic better than others. And 7325 is really nice for that. It has a, a, an ability to really grab that metallic powder and hold it in place. And that's important so that, that metal powder doesn't move around when the foam starts moving through the mold. Now as a side note, this 7325 mold is over six years old now and we're still pulling casts out of it. So this is a great workhorse silicone for this type of part or for production casting. And other silicones in our product line that work well with the metallic powders and foam casting are the 8030 in the Tinsil line, the 7325 of course, and 7120. Now there's others that do as well, but those are my three favorites for casting flexible foams and especially flexible foams when you're using metallic powders. Now I'm using some canned air. This is some of the poly purge that we use to preserve the part A. And I'm using that to just blow out any of the excess metal powder. And that just ensures that we get a, a cleaner pull out of our cast. Now we're removing the heat source. You notice that at the beginning of the video we had that under a work light. And that warmed the mold up to about 100 degrees. And that really helps with the quality of the skin on this self-skinning foam. If you don't do that, if you pour into a cold mold, a lot of times you'll find that your skin is not as well developed on the surface of the part. Now for Prop Foam 10, since it is that 100 of part B to 40 parts of A, we're going to measure out 100 parts here, 100 grams of the B. And before we add the A, because foam has a very short working time, we're going to pigment the part B. And that way we don't uh, take away from any of that valuable mixing time later on. Now since we're simulating that look of a, a steel uh, pipe wrench, we're going to simulate that by adding a few drops of red polycolor and a few drops of black polycolor. And up against that white base, that'll give us a very nice uh, rich red color that will accurately simulate that original color of that painted steel wrench. Now ready to add our part A. And again here, our mix ratio is 100B to 40 parts of A. And you can vary that slightly. The Prop Foam series can be varied slightly to achieve different densities, but it's always a good idea to master it at the correct density before you experiment with adding more or less of the Part A. Now ready to mix that up, and our pot life is very fast. We only have about 45 seconds to mix this up accurately, and of course you do want to mix as accurately as possible, and then pour that into our mold. So time is of the essence here. You want to mix it correctly, accurately, and get it quickly poured into the mold. And you'll notice how I pour it all up and down one side of the mold, and, and then I close the mold before it has a chance to really start expanding. And that's critical. If it starts to expand too much, we could wind up with a really wide seam. So you want to close the mold and immediately attach the tension straps. And you'll notice there how I rolled the mold over on the other side. It's kind of like those little waffle makers that you find in uh, hotels. When you flip that mold over and then the foam starts expanding on the opposite side, it helps the skin on both sides of the mold. Now once those tension straps are put in place, we want to very carefully tilt the mold upright so that it can vent out the top. 
and allow the mold to expand undisturbed. And that's really important. Anytime you're dealing with flexible foams, rigid foams are not quite as finicky, but flexible foams are very finicky, especially in regards to their skin properties. You don't want to disturb the mold while it's expanding. Let it, dis uh, let it expand on its own and then allow it to cure in a warm area for 30 to 45 minutes. And now ready to demold our final cast part. And we have a foam wrench with a really nice skin on it. And as an aside, even though this is an industrial foam and it does take some extra work to use, it is a very ex inexpensive foam to use. Uh, to give you an idea, a gallon kit of this foam is around $75. So it's a great inexpensive way to make uh, hand props like this and any other flexible foam padding parts or anything like that that needs a good tough skin on it. That's the best thing about this prop foam tin is it has a really nice uh, self-skinning skin. It's uh, almost like you've brushed an elastomer into the mold. Now, once we've trimmed up our part, we're gonna do one last little finishing touch to this to make it look a little bit more metallic. You notice how we got that nice intrinsic uh, deep red by mixing some black and red polycolor with our foam. We're also going to give it the look of scuffed metal, and we're going to do that by using some of the silver metal rub. And the silver metal rub is a wax. This is one of the Sculpt Nouveau products, and it's basically a metallic wax that dries and cures uh, and makes it very difficult to remove. And what we're going to do is just dry brush some of that over the high points of our piece. And that'll give it the look of just slightly worn steel all over the part. And you just want to dry brush it in areas where it would naturally wear down. And that just gives it a much more realistic appearance, especially on that lettering, any of those raised areas that would naturally scuff and rub off that paint. And once we've applied that all over our part, we now have our finished prop wrench ready for an action scene. Now you'll notice this one is fairly flexible. Now after it sits for a little while, it'll actually get a little bit more firm. But if you need it more firm than that, you might want to check our other videos where we show how to put an armature in place, a uh, plastic rod or fiberglass rod that can uh, give it a little bit more shape to it if you're, if you're going to be swinging a large, long prop and you don't want it bending in the scene. It's a good idea to embed a fiberglass rod or a piece of coat hanger or any kind of plastic rod to prevent that part from wiggling too much. And there you have the basic casting process for flexible foam and more specifically the Prop Foam 10 flexible foam and the self-skinning foam. And of course, all the products used in this video are available on our web store at brickintheyard.com. And as you'll see below, you can save $10 by entering the coupon code PROPFOAM on our web store to save a little bit of money next time you purchase some of our Prop Foam 10.